What's going on, guys? You know, with so many good shows on Netflix nowadays, sometimes I'll forget that there are so many good shows on network TV. And spring is the time when shows end and go into hibernation till the fall. But what's a good season finale without a juicy cliffhanger? Here come the 10 best TV cliffhangers ever. By the way, since we're talking about cliffhangers, there's gonna be some spoilers. Number 10, BBC's Sherlock, The Reichenbach Fall. The show that introduced us to Benedict Cumberbatch also produced one of the most recent jaw-dropping finales when Sherlock apparently committed suicide to save the lives of his right-hand man Watson and pretty much everyone else he loved. Sherlock! Viewers knew Sherlock lived, but had to wait two long years to find out how he did it in the season three premiere. You know what, maybe you could pick up the pace, Sherlock. Might help if Benedict Cumberbatch wasn't in everything. Battlestar Galactica had one of the best makeovers in TV history, transforming itself from a cheesy 70s Star Wars ripoff into one of television's best dramas. The show was full of crazy season finales, including Edward James Olmos getting plugged by a Cylon, but the biggest surprise came at the end of season two when the Weasley newly elected President Baltar settles the human race on a dreary planet called New Caprica. All of a sudden, those bastard toasters show up out of nowhere and just like that, the human race has been conquered. On behalf of the people of the 12 colonies, I surrender. Cut to credits. And the really frustrating thing about Battlestar, when the season ended, you never knew when it was coming back or if it was coming back, kind of like when my girlfriend goes to work. Anyone remember Fringe? While you were out getting laid on Friday nights, I was home watching Fox's pretty good J.J. Abrams show about alternate universes. In their season one finale, FBI agent and supernatural investigator Olivia sets up a meeting with a mysterious scientist, William Bell. She walks out of an elevator and comes face to face with the late great Leonard Nimoy, but something's not quite logical. Why does this newspaper say something about the new White House? Olivia looks out the window and the camera zooms out to reveal that she's in the World Trade Center. What is this crazy alternate reality? Viewers of Fringe had to wait months to find out. And binge watchers of Fringe had to wait minutes. People who've never experienced life without internet, you don't know how hard television watching used to be. Our number seven cliffhanger is an especially frustrating one because it's never gonna be resolved. That's right, it's the episode that had millions thinking that their cable had gone out. The series finale of The Sopranos. You got Tony and his family sitting down for a nice meal. Meadow is showing us her superior parallel parking skills. Journey playing on the soundtrack. Mysterious men coming and going and then... Don't stop! What happened? Is Tony dead? Was he shot by a former associate? Did he have a heart attack from all those greasy onion rings? Did Big Pussy come back to life? The world will never know. Don't stop believing. I stopped believing the moment that screen went to black. Speaking of series finale cliffhangers that were never resolved, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Twin Peaks. David Lynch's surreal drama was supposedly about solving murders in a crazy northwestern town and delicious pie. Two more pieces of this incredible pie. But really, it was about showcasing David Lynch's kooky characters, like the log lady and that weird dancing little person, and FBI agent Dale Cooper, played by Kyle MacLachlan. Now, in the final episode of season two, Cooper takes a trip to the Black Lodge, a sinister place full of David Lynchian type things. Cooper gets injured, but seemingly returns to reality only to reveal that he's actually been possessed by the big bad of the series, Killer Bob. How's Annie? <laughs> <laughs> what? I do that every morning when I'm brushing my teeth. At number five comes the granddaddy of season finale cliffhangers, Dallas's Who Shot JR. Dallas was an 80s primetime soap about rich people who use ruthless tactics to screw each other out of money and oil. Luckily, we fixed that problem in society. The most evil son of a bitch in Texas was Larry Hagman's J.R. Ewan. In the season three finale, A House Divided, J.R. basically spent the whole episode pissing people off Texas style until he found himself alone at night and then this happened. For more info on Dallas, Ask your weird aunt. Of course, we can't talk about who shot JR without its modern equivalent, who shot Mr. Burns. Yep, somebody in Springfield finally shoots the old miser after he blocks out the sun, and 
everyone in town is a suspect. <laughs> well, I couldn't possibly solve this mystery. Can you? Simpsons fans spent an entire summer trying to figure out who done it, until it was revealed that it was the baby. Yep, Maggie Simpson. Luckily, she wasn't charged with attempted cartoon murder. No jury in the world is gonna convict a baby. Maybe Texas. Coming in at number three is the show that specialized in asking questions that may or may not have answers. Lost. The season three finale was a doozy, leaving fans in shock over the loss of fan favorite Charlie, but it saved the biggest shock for last as it revealed that the flashbacks to a traumatized, poorly bearded Jack Shepard weren't flashbacks at all. They were flash forwards. What? Bye, Jack. We have to go back, Kate. We have to go back! How did they get off the island? Who else made it? Is everyone else dead? The show would go on to answer those questions. And pretty much nothing else, as Lost would go down in history as perhaps the most front-loaded show of all time. I mean, seriously, time travel in a cave? Come on, guys. At number two is the only cliffhanger that happened while the character was taking a number two? Breaking Bad season five shocker, gliding overall. Things are looking up for everyone's favorite teacher slash cancer survivor slash meth kingpin, Walter White. But those plans are coming crashing down around him when his DEA brother-in-law, Hank, pops a squat and finds an incriminating book that finally connects the dots as we see him realize that his brother-in-law is the man that he's been chasing all along. WW. You figure that is, yeah. Walter White. <laughs> you got me. Seriously, Heisenberg, who leaves an incriminating book next to the shitter? We're here, finally, the number one television cliffhanger on our list. It can be summed up in three words. Mr. Worf. Fire. That's right, Star Trek The Next Generation produced one of the all-time greatest season finales when Captain Picard was abducted and assimilated by the Borg. First Officer William Riker orders the Enterprise to destroy the Borg ship with a massive space weapon, which would kill their beloved captain and ensure that the series would have 100% less Earl Grey tea Earl Grey. and 100% more trombone playing. <laughs> Trek fans waited nervously for an entire summer to see if Picard would bite the space bullet before the season four premiere, where the weapon failed. But the Enterprise was able to rescue their captain. This assured us of years more of Picard in command and years more of Riker sitting down like this. Dr. Pulaski's being shown to her quarters. We're ready to get underway. I wish I could be a fly on the wall the day he came up with that and he was like, aha, this'll be my thing. Well, that was fun and educational. Are there any cliffhangers that we... Nick Mundy's here. Hey, Hal. Hey, Nick, why are you here? Well, I just want to let you know and the Screen Junkie fans know that my new Comedy Central show, Nothing to Report, is now available online, ComedyCentral.com, and their YouTube channel, Comedy Central, or a link below. And are you in it with anybody? Yes, WWE superstar Chris Jericho. That's reason enough to tune in. Nick Mundy, get the f*** out of here. Thanks. So, what do we leave out? What's the best TV cliffhanger in your opinion? Let us know in the comments section below. Tell us why. And the best answer, we'll send you a Screen Junkies t-shirt. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye-bye. Han Solo says, we're home, Chewie. We're home. Is the Millennium Falcon part of, is it, is it sitting in that sand from that giant battle? Because it looks Found a by dirty. a scavenger? Found by a scavenger.